www.greenbizsbc.org. And then as far as the contracts are concerned, we talked about that, and this is probably a good time to um, upgrade your home improvement contract if you haven't done it for a while, and you guys all know how to do that through the Contractor State Licensing Board, but it's especially appropriate, I think, in this case to really um, describe your product details in your contract more than you might, uh, you might be inclined to do. We may, we'll look at Christine Mullenkamp, ask her to see if she, you know, to analyze the program and see what the pitfalls would be. But I did want to ask you, are they still able to file mechanics liens in this case? Mm -hmm. I would imagine they can. It's a legitimate contract. Okay. And especially because you're not giving, the, you're not paying the contractors, you're paying the home rent. Right? You could take that money and run, so. Yeah, unless yeah. you're going to check it. That's, 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 that's my concern. Yeah. And, you know, you get a project ten, twenty thousand dollars and you have four or five subs doing the work and you give them the chunk of money and the homeowner has an expense and tells the subs, oh, I'm sorry. Right. And then you're fighting, you're fighting the homeowner for your money and your contract is with the homeowner and you're getting all the taxes and it leaves the contractor calling Kristen again. Yeah, so <laughs> plus it's a law. You, if you work on a house, it's a it's a privilege to that homeowner to know that an employee is not going to file a lien. It's a courtesy. It's mm -hmm. the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's required by law. It is by the contractor's board. If you're you can lose your contractor's right. license. Right. Oh for no, not I know that. Filing. I'm just wondering, you know, it, because it does add just another layer that we're going to need to work through. You know what there needs to be for homeowners what? is a, a little nice booklet. From the Contractors Association, I know, not from I'm, us. That's why I'm collecting it. Um, <laughs> explanation of what that is and why it's a courtesy, so that they know they're not getting a lien filed on their house, but it's a notice. Yes, that a notice is not. It's something that you guys can give to your client. You mean? Yeah. Okay. And letting them know that it is required mm -hmm. by law that we do it. It's we're not doing. For it a licensed contractor, right. You're not licensed. Again. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to be working on the house. Just a nice way. little explanation that the whole. The, for anything mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. could use mm -hmm. to explain to homeowners what that is. Well, and I just want to make sure that we can go ahead and lien the property because there's now a lien on the property yeah. in this case, and, and obviously our lien is not going to come in front of your lien. <laughs> so uh, I think our contractors just need to be aware of that but, a little bit. Okay, the homeowner's not going to get the money mm -hmm. until the project's completely done. And it's going to take you how long to fund it? Is it six done? Time? Yeah, okay. we're hoping. We should be able to fund within 24 hours. Oh, all right, cool. So it's not, we're time. not looking at a month. No. Okay. So this actually so lends that, yeah. into the, my... The money's already been reserved. Okay. Interest is already accruing. We want to get the money cool. out the door to move on. So interest accrues when they sign the loan paper? When they're yes. approved. When they're approved. When they're approved. So they want a fast contractor yeah. to do the work? If they want people who are familiar with the program, this sets up for familiar with the program, helps get that process done. Yeah, we, we will continue to be talking about the training um, aspects and marketing aspects of this um, within the Contractors Association. So we'll, you know, this is just going to be an ongoing conversation. I'm pretty excited myself. And I have a question for Mike Zimmer, who's the next uh, presenter here. Um, so does that mean that when you guys come to the house for the final inspection, that that triggers the funding? Okay, see, it was such a, such a <laughs> segue. Like that segue? Yeah, I like that too. You know, does it matter where I stand? No, no, no. Um, thank you, Robin. Jeff, that was great. I learned a lot from that. So, um, my name is Mike Zimmer. I'm the building official for the County of Santa Barbara. And since Angie and Dave uh, said, would you like to be a part of this program? And I sheepishly said, yeah. Uh, I have been very busy with other building officials throughout the county. All the cities are participating in this, as uh, Dave mentioned earlier. And we've had two meetings so far, general meetings, and I have had other side discussions with all the building officials throughout the county of Santa Barbara, uh, all the eight cities, so that we can be consistent in applying this program from the permitting side. So what we're looking at is when you come into this program or when the applic applicant comes into this program, the, the building and safety agencies are going to be looking for a couple of things. One is when you come in to apply that you bring in the application number with uh, your application, with your permit application. So what we're saying is please bring us the application number for the loan because that's going to help in our reporting process and make it easier 
for us to report back to HCD at the end when actually the funding is going to take place. So the first thing I want to talk about, though, is when you come in to do the permitting. We're looking at trying to make this a very simple process if we can, but as Dave uh, mentioned earlier, some of these projects are going to be very large. If you're doing cool roofs or, or you're doing major photovoltaic systems, which I'm glad so many people are here, uh, that's going to require a larger permit, which is going to require plans, and as you all know, we have to submit for photovoltaic systems. But what you would probably have to submit, the ones who aren't familiar with a cool roof, you're talking about removing the roof, removing the plywood, or whatever roof covering sheeting there is, and replacing that. That requires a plan. Uh, that's a structural plan for us. So, and it's going to depend on the different cities. So, but for the most part, we're all going to require that. So, a project of that size would definitely require plans to come in with the application. Now, when you're doing smaller type projects, we've worked out with HCD that if um, they, the list that is given to HCD from the contractor or from the applicant as to what energy upgrades they're going to do, like the water heater, the insulation, windows, things of that nature, if that same list that is given to HCD as the application comes over to the building and safety uh, agencies, then we will have the, pretty much the same exact list that we'll be able to put into the scope of work for the permit. So that when the inspector goes out to actually do the, perform the inspections, they're looking at exactly what was applied for in the application to, for the loan and versus what was applied for for the building application. That way it's going to make it very simple for us and for you when we go out to perform the inspections once the permit has been issued. If there is any changes in that, then that will just complicate the problem, or the process, excuse me. Now there are some types of permits that will be um, applied for where parts of the permit will be exempt. For example, gray water systems, if you will. Those are systems that do not require a plumbing permit under the California state law. So if that is included, if you have an applicant who says, oh, I've got to have a gray water system, I, I really want that, that's part of what I think is good energy savings. We will actually take that in under the permit, even though it doesn't require it, uh, because obviously most gray water systems will not be a standalone permit. We will take that in and put it on the list, even though it's not an official part of the permit. We will inspect it so that we can report back to HCD that what you applied for on the application for the loan is the same thing that was signed off in the field by the inspection staff. Okay, so yeah, things like that. Mike, right, historically, insulation alone has never required a right, permit. That's what I'm so saying. if someone did that alone, yeah, so if but you, how do you know about it? Just from the application to go inspect? Exactly. Or? What we're going to have to do is, in order to satisfy the loan application, we're going to have to issue a permit. And I have already, I have already spoken to uh, Sonoma County and asked them, do you see a problem with setting a precedent in the future for items that don't normally, mm -hmm. do not normally require a permit? No, we don't believe that's a precedent because it's mandated by the requirements of the loan, okay? So we're, all those building officials are talking about that. We're going to go through and train our staff that even though you see stuff that comes in that won't normally require a permit because of this program, we will go ahead and take that in, issue a permit on it of some type so that we can go out and physically inspect it and then sign it off and send over the final over to HCD. So, that's so you're saying all aspects of, the, of everything under this program does have to be committed? It'll have to be in order to satisfy the funding from my understanding. So well, there'll be there a fee no, for that? There program. are no costs associated with those items that wouldn't require a permit. Well, we can't, we, we can't issue a permit without charging a fee because fees from all permitting agencies are approved by either the City Council or the Board of Supervisors in our case. So that would be a gift of public funds. We couldn't do that. We would actually have to charge a permit fee and go out there and do it. Although it would be a minor permit fee for something of insulation or well, something or some small like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends. I mean, permit fees can run anywhere from $200 to a couple of thousand dollars depending on the size of the project. I don't want to get into fees because all sizes of projects vary. So it could be maybe an hour inspection fee or something of that nature. I think our smallest permit fee is $220 or $250. So this is an issue because, you know, if we have to, it, it makes the program a little less marketable as well if they have to get something permitted that ordinarily they wouldn't. Ultimately what we need is a verification that right. what was applied for was in mm -hmm. and when we en encounter this issue with things that don't normally require a permit, we're still at the stage of trying to be flexible to work through the issues so that there isn't a cost burden to the applicant and to uh, the program. So uh, bear with us as we 
you know, work through this particular issue. Well, I know you in Sonoma County, 